Crossroads Media. Don't forget, Coffee with Broads is back Monday, Thursday mornings, 11 a.m. Link is down below in the description to sign up here on the YouTube memberships so you will have access. Love you guys. Now that's what I call baseball. <laughs> what was that CD back in the day? Now that's what I call music volume one. That's what I call music volume two. Here's one. Now that's what I call home runs when Bryce Harper has volume one, a solo shot to go up one nothing. Volume 2, a solo shot to go up 2-1. And then the Grand Salami to cap it all off. And don't forget that he should have had another extra base hit that was stolen from him, robbed out in center field with the magnificent effort. But he could have even torched the Reds even more than he did. And there's no doubt in my mind that he was thinking about that 10th inning yesterday all night long. He couldn't sleep. He was staring at the ceiling trying to count sheep Okay, trying to put sports talk with Broads on his iPad and he'd put on his little AirPods trying to fall asleep at night to some beautiful sounds. Nothing could put him to sleep because, well, he had a nightmare and the nightmare was Cincinnati was throwing pitches over the plate for him to demolish and he just missed it and he had an 0 for 5 day. He wasn't going to let that happen again. There's no doubt in my mind that that inspired his ass. And also, you go to the park, you're all fired up to make up for what happened yesterday. It's a bunch of rain. Are you going to pitch? Are you not going to pitch? Well, watching Spencer Turnbull, the way that he was preparing his body, going through his standard little routine that he does, throwing the football, working with the towel to get his hands going. I mean, this guy was so locked, and you could tell that he was pumped up to take the ball, and he sure pitched like it. Five innings of scoreless ball. Not only that, he didn't walk one man, so you're not putting anybody on the bases for free, and you finish off with seven Ks, and then you go to your pen. Connor Brogdon, smell you later. I never want to see your face again, and here comes Pito at the, on the bump, and this dude was electric. I don't give a damn what happens in the ninth inning. I don't care when the game was essentially over that they tacked on some useless garbage because this dude was awesome and the defense for the Phils played awesome. I don't want to forget about what Alec Bohm was doing over at third base. That dude was a vacuum cleaner sucking it all up and the one that he didn't which was roped down the third base side and I actually was thinking the same damn thing that Krucky said when he mentioned it. I'm like you know what dude I was just about to go there. The fact that he was angry with himself when he didn't make a play that would have been absurd because the ball was totally smoked and this is coming after you already made an excellent play defensively across the diamond with the big hose out to Bryce Harper beautifully done like the fact that you got so mad at yourself you expect yourself to make those grabs come on two three years ago with Alec Boehm we were never there this guy has become so great while Trey Turner is throwing the ball eight feet over Bryce's head and giving the Reds life that they don't deserve which that did come across the board to score, so now instead of being up one nothing, it's tied 1-1. Alec Bohm is the complete opposite. I used to complain 24-7 that all of his defensive errors were killing you, and he wasn't providing enough offensively, and that is not the case at all anymore, and it's actually starting to go to Trey Turner, but yeah, I mean, there was another ugly one for Trey. Maybe you could blame the rain. Maybe you could blame the weather. I don't know, but now that's a couple of times here in the first handful of games that we've seen it. Something the monitor. I won't let that bother me tonight just because for the first time this year, I'm excited. I'm stoked. That was a baseball game. That was fun. That was enjoyable. De La Cruz trying to flip the ball out of his glove. It gets stuck. Keeps an inning alive. De La Cruz going to his right as he's charging the ball. Throws across his body. Pulls the first baseman off of first base. Although so probably still a catchable one. De La Cruz with another error. I mean, that guy was just trying to win. I bet you he had Phil's money line. I stayed away from it. I actually got a text from one of my buddies said, yo, Broach, what are you thinking tonight? I said, pound Braves money line and parlay it with the Cleveland Guardians plus one and a half. I don't think it's looking very good for me. The last I checked at the time of this pod, the Braves were trying to make a comeback in the ninth. I'm too afraid to look right now because it has been a bad day. When I tell you it's been a bad day for me and my little DraftKings sportsbook balance, I, 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 I'm 
not lying. All right, of course, the White Sox win 3-2. to two. I'm happy from Phillies fan land, but from my bank account in Brooklyn Needs Diapers land, yeah, probably not, uh, not good. Not good. So, <laughs> it's the type of stuff that happens to me. When it rains, it pours. But, you know, but um, that makes no sense. I don't, that, that didn't apply to this conversation at all. You know what does, though? Brandon Marsh being an everyday player, I'm just saying. I just want to make sure that this is very clear. It's known that he went lefty-lefty. Okay, lefty, lefty, a hit. I'm going to say it just in case Rob Thompson is listening and he has this on his Bluetooth drive into CBP, getting ready for the next game. Play Brandon Marsh every day, every day, because not only is he going lefty, lefty now, which is what was apparently holding him back and not allowing him to be in the lineup, he also went opposite field home run. So I'm just saying it's like he could do everything. It's like he could defend well. It's like he has a cannon of an arm and gunning guys out. Go look at the miles per hour that that puppy came in to throw out Jonathan India when he gets a leadoff triple and then goes, no, I'm going to make sure that that's a goose egg by the time we get to the dugout. I'm going to make sure it's oh oh when we get our first opportunity to bat and that's exactly what Brandon Marsh did. Then he also provides a lefty-lefty hit on that game. He provides a lefty-lefty hit in this game. He also shows the power and now he has two home runs on the season. I don't know what else you need to see. So the next time I see it, as long as it's not after some wild 0 for 20 stretch, you know, if that's the case, then fine. Maybe the dude needs a breather, but I don't anticipate that nice, strong beard to go through that level of funk with that wild, wet hair, okay? Because this guy's a monster, and it just doesn't happen. He's a damn good player. He's a damn good player. You got him for a reason. You traded for him for a reason. You stated you saw something in his swing that Kevin Long could could totally, um, uh, tweak a little bit and you can switch that up and when he comes to town from the Angels we'll find something that's beautiful and you did use them let's not be stupid for some reason they like to overthink things don't overthink things Brandon Marsh deserves to be in the lineup every day that I breathe so just make sure I don't collapse I asked my tattoo artist she said I'm going down at 56 that means I'm halfway through but that means for the next 28 years Brandon Marsh has to be in the Phillies lineup as long as he's got a contract and lacing him up here all right So your pitching was so good, so good, so good, so good. I just really noticed when they were showing some of the highlight package and showing Turnbull getting ready for the game, it did seem like he had a different look in his eye. I mean, I'm not just saying that because he performed well. I was a little intrigued by his body language. Uh, he he was focused. He was focused. You don't know if the weather's going to hold up. You don't know if you're going to play. I saw from Matt Gelb and from some of the other people that cover the team, during the time of the rain, it was almost a puddle in the outfield. looked like a river. I didn't see that. I I. Totally just blew that out of proportion. But we didn't know if they were going to play. Hey, make sure you're locked in. Make sure you're not getting screwed up. You know who got screwed up from it all? De La Cruz. He got all screwed up and let it affect him. Not my man Spencer Turnbull, who I knew was going to be great. (laughs) Oh, nothing like the fifth starter, baby. Nothing like it. I I was screaming at the top of my lungs. Here I am making a K-cup in the kitchen. It was about, what, 9 o'clock or so? I just fed Brooklyn. We were putting her down to sleep. Her room's in the back. So you could be a little noisier in the kitchen in the living room area. And when its base is loaded, you see him working the at-bat as smooth as he did. You kind of knew that. All right, well, what do you got here? You got to pick your poison. Am I walking Bryce Harper or am I going to challenge him and show that I got a nutsack? Speaking of a nutsack, Garrett Stubbs, I don't know if he does. So that was a concern is can he have children? But in reality, the fact that you challenge you know what's probably going to happen after he already did that twice. Maybe that was what they were thinking. Well, he's already hit two. What are the odds he's going to hit a third? <laughs> I'll tell you what the odds are. A thousand. A thousand. I haven't felt this good after a baseball game yet. All right, so I'm just soaking it in and appreciating. Here's some of the few scares. Turner's error. All right, Stubbs' his balls. And the fact that Bryce Harper slipped over at first base. is He's lucky. All right, they showed the replay a few times. He's trying to stretch. He's trying to put his front foot out. His back foot's on the base. Here's a base runner running hard through first. Please don't step on the ankle. Please don't have anybody slip. Please don't. uh, Please don't. Just uh, please don't. And Nick Castellanos. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Those are my scares. My known 
my known? Well, Kyle Schwarber's the greatest leadoff hitter of all time. Now he's smacking around singles. These bats are breaking every single single of his, though, no? So the reason why you're getting the singles is because the bats are breaking. But once he starts squaring these puppies up, all of these singles just turn to bombs. That's how it happens. That's what my mind tells me is real. Therefore, I'm going to sleep tonight convincing myself that that is 1,000% the case. What else is the case here? Well, the Anytime Hotline. All right, the Anytime Hotline. Because I'm sure you guys are all excited just like me. So I want to make this open to you all and let you have your peace and share your state of mind. Let's run things on over to the Anytime Hotline. Oh! Oh! Oh my God, that's my balls. I'm feeling like Garrett Stubbs after Bryce Harper. It is third home run of the game on the Grand Salami. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bryce Harper is literally the GOAT. The GOAT. And if anybody has anything to say about it, they can take it up with me, okay? (laughs) And how about Pinto? How about Pinto Beans with the nice little outing, right? The pitching didn't do too so bad, right? I'm calling calling in the eighth inning, so this might be a little preemptive, but I'm feeling confident. Pinto Beans and Turnbull. Turnbull, man, looked good. Looks good. Had a great, great little outing for a fifth starter. Cannot complain. Cannot complain one bit. Turnbull looked great. And, hey, I got to say, the serious points of this call, I want Rob Thompson to listen to this right now. I need Brandon Marsh playing in left field every day. Enough of this Whit Merrifield bullshit. I love Whit. Hey, I'd rather have a 24-year-old left fielder than a 35-year-old left fielder. I'm just saying. And I love Whit. I love the signing, but, dude. You need to play Marsh every day. Switch Witt in where you need him, okay? And how about Schwarber? I just want to say this. Schwarber's looking a little thin. And I don't want to say it's uh, correlating, but seeing the ball a lot better. Moving a lot better on the bases. Looking good, man. The best leadoff hitter in the MLB continues to fucking rake, all right? The boys are fucking lit, okay? Bryce Harper's the GOAT. I love bros media. I love sports talk with bros. Good night, Philadelphia. I mean, that is just a beautiful call. Very, very strong. Very big start. I hope the others can really support that because if we can get those level of calls every day, you know, we might be number one on the charts. But thanks for the love, all jokes aside. And, dude, I mean, yes, when you look at what this bullpen did today, it would have been nice to not have Connor Brogdon in the game to give up a grand salami of his own in game one of this series. But what do I know? Because here you go, you, you make a call, you bring someone up due to desperation. Think about this. You were so damn desperate, you pretty much went with the mentality of anybody but. It was anybody but uh, uh, Connor Brogdon. And that anybody but ended up being ruthless. That guy ended up being shut down. Don't care about the ninth. When the game was important, when the game still had legs, he was the killer. He was the dude that was mowing you down. He had good defense behind it. But I even watched him when he first got out there. Here he is busting his ass over the first bait, doing the little things. You know how many times I've watched someone, there's a ground ball to the right side, first base side, and they're lollygagging around, half there, do a little hippity hop over to first base, hoping to get there in time. Bust your ass! Get there and beat the play out. And he did that too. And that stuff matters, all right? So it is wild to think about the downfall of Connor Brogdon and where he once was and where he is now, but he's just not even even someone that you can go to. And when you hear him so down after he gave up that grand slam saying, I'm lost, you know, you know, it's so down bad that you're actually admitting that you are overthinking everything and you just can't even lie. You can't even make up any sort of play or speak or any sort of just basic standard uh, sort of response. Uh, You know, you're just like, I got to put both my hands up. All right, see you later. And then let's go 
back to Lehigh and see what we can make shift up. And what you can make shift up is 50 times the player Connor Brogdon is. And you saw that tonight. So this is where I'm at today, baby. I'm on a different level. And that's the way we should embrace this until we see what happens tomorrow afternoon, right? Because if you drop the series, I'm going to be a madman. But if you win the series, I'm going to be a madman. So you're getting the madman no matter what. It's just, am I a happy one or am I an absolute jerk-off? Well, only time will tell. But as for tonight, I don't know. I guess you can describe this however you want to. Some would say jerk-off. I say fan of the Phillies that just watched Bryce Harper smoke around six runs. Should have been more, but unfortunately, good defensive play out in center. Three bombs. Three bombs, man. I'm telling you, there is a correlation from what we saw in the 10th inning. Bryce dreams of those. I labeled it a nightmare earlier in the show, but when he has a wet dream, that wet dream, and and he's thinking about certain things when he's falling asleep, it's that. It's that. It's those pitches. And for him to not do the tattoo, okay? You got to tattoo those. For him to not... I could only imagine how much he replayed that over and over and over again. It's not ironic that the following day he puts up that type of performance. That's why these guys that are wired differently at the top of the very tippy, tippy top of the greatest in the world, that's why they succeed at the rate that they do because they're obsessed. They know when they screw up and they let it eat them alive until they get to the ballpark the next day to uh, really establish themselves once again. No! No! Not again. (laughs) And Bryce did that and then so. All right, back to the phones we go. Holy hell! Bend them over! Bro, I know you saw fucking Bryce Harper with three fucking bombs, topping it off with a fucking Grammy Slammy, <laughs> and it's only the seventh inning! God damn, bro. Yeah, man, I think this dude's probably the greatest fucking American to ever fucking live. Wow, okay, that's definitely some high praise. (laughs) I I do agree, though, that when it's him, it hits different. It hits different than anything else. Joel and B just returned, and they had a good win against the OKC Thunder, squeezed by as the Thunder had a couple of nice looks there towards the end at the Wells Fargo Center tonight. Um, And it is weird because I told you, when it does go south in this town, it goes south for all the teams. And then when things happen that are on a 1,000, it seems like everybody else follows suits. So Bryce does this, Joel. Well, Embiid returns, they get a win. Now the optimism is back for the Sixers, at least a little bit. There's not a lot of teams that scare you in the Eastern Conference. We'll get to that conversation at another time. Now it's not the time. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you you watch Bryce do this. And maybe it's because of the epic playoff performances. When you watch him against the Padres, when you watch him against the Braves, when you see these clutch moments, and it seems like he hits, I don't know, 750 during the most important at-bats in his career. Whenever it is so much pressure, and whenever you can hear people breathe in the stands because of the anxiety, the anxiousness, the moment is very large, it's cold outside. How about what he was wearing today. He might have to go with that mask until he until he cools off. You know how he always steals JT Real Muto's bat or he steals someone else's bat. Maybe he got to rock the mask a little bit. He had that thing by his mouth. I didn't know what the hell I was looking at, but it seemed cool and it seemed like it worked. So let it go, baby. Let it keep rocking. But yeah, I mean, when Bryce does it, it hits me different. I haven't watched Joel Embiid have the level of success that Bryce Harper has had in the playoffs. So knowing he's a machine at that time, I think it really does even bolster up these regular season moments. We really haven't had any for the Flyers, and football is in its league of its own. So, you know, watching Jalen Hurts do something or watching Hassan Reddick, who will no longer be here, do something. I don't know. Football is different. Football is a different type of beast. So it, it it's just a... Totally different way of looking at things. All right. Anyway, next call. Bros, that is the expectation. That is the standard for Philadelphia Phillies baseball. First of all, Bryce Harper, for all the people that were freaking out, that's why you never count out NB3. He is one bad man. But, bros, I'll tell you what. What I got out of this outing 
with Spencer Turnbull and Ricardo Pinto. Join the roster today. Bye-bye, Brogdon. Never want to see you again. Pinto going 70-plus pitches for the five-inning save, four-inning save, whatever it was. Love it. This team is back where we are. Let's win the series tomorrow, get back at 500, and let's just restart the season 0-0. Let's go Phillies, baby. Yeah. Was that L.A. night? Was that an L.A. night? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got WrestleMania coming up, baby. I'll be there Saturday. But with your point of counting Bryce out, I don't think even us, the ones that maybe are a little annoyed after him being hitless through four games or so and then having an 0 for 5 night during that stretch, it's not that we count him out, all right? I even got some of that on Twitter a little bit, and I just laugh. But it's like, you're not allowed to enjoy this because you said that he might be hurt in spring training. Wait a second. You think you're going to be able to tell me that I'm not allowed to enjoy Bryce Harper? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I don't doubt Bryce ever. I just go through the stages of he's not performing well, and I think he's so good that it is always odd when he doesn't perform well. So why wasn't he performing well? Well, maybe there's something to it. Let's dive into it. Well, Jason Stark pointed out his launch angle was one of the ugliest he's seen. All right, then he points out the fact that he's never been through a spring training where he didn't hit any homers. So when he's going through that through the first four games and he's not getting any hits and he flies over the railing, and let's not act like that. That was some little fall. That was a huge fall to the point where he didn't play game three of the season. So this doesn't surprise me because, yeah, it's Bryce Harper. He is a different maniac. He does live on a different planet. He may be an alien. So now it does surprise me. So when he doesn't do this, it surprises me. That's really the moral of the story. That's why my alarms go off. That's why I get upset. My body starts shaking because I don't know how long I can handle it because he has set the precedent that this is the norm. This is what you should be expecting. And when he doesn't do this, now we got to all wonder why. I don't wonder why with Nick. I don't think Nick's hurt. I think Nick is this. I think he has no plate discipline. I think that he's almost like Connor Price lost. He's lost. He doesn't know what to do up there. That's it. I don't have to worry about that. Well, I do have to worry about that, but I, I don't think that there's something wrong. I think that's what he is. This is Price. And this is the standard he set. Oh, man. You're right, though, about the pitching. It is nice to know the next time we roll around this rotation, I feel good about Spencer... Um Spencer Turnbull and Christopher Sanchez because those two pitched their heart out. The funny part of this all is second time through the rotation, who's got the biggest question mark? Who's got the most stress? Who has to be on the top of his A game more than anybody else? They all do, but it's Aaron Nola. Just after studying what they all did their first time around. Zach, ho-hum, Christopher Sanchez deserved a better outcome. He was so good. Spencer, so good. Think about the alternative. What if Turnbull went out there and went two innings? You're already putting a lot of miles on some of their arms in the pen. So Rob is a little nervous and decides to keep people down on the bench and not call their number, which automatically resulted in a loss by putting Connor Brogdon. No, not Soto. He can't go. He threw one pitch. Threw one pitch. Threw one pitch. Okay. All right. Well, you get this out of Spence. How about that? I throw a little Spence in there. Can we go Spence? We go Turney. What do you think his nickname? I had a little hockey. I threw a little hockey in there. A little Turner. Hey, yep, yep, Turnsy. Probably not. They probably call him Spencer. But anyway, Spencer. I don't got to ask questions next time around. Hi. I'm not. I'm not worried next time around. Hi. We got this. Hi. We got a number five. Hi. I don't think Taiwan Walker could do that. Hi. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Amadeo. I think Bryce Harper personally last night after that, you know, extra inning loss, uh, watched Bro's Media last night, and he saw you talking about him. And I think tonight, I think he took it personal, and he gave you a gigantic double bird saying, fuck you, Hunter Brody, basically, as he hits three home runs. Man. That was much needed. Holy shit. 
<laughs> and hey, they just needed a win, man. And I don't care if it comes off the back of Bryce Harper carrying the team. That's amazing. Turnbull, hey, he was very solid. And where the hell did Pinto come from? Rob Thompson owes this guy a week's worth of dinner for all the innings that he ate tonight. Basically, the close off the game because you can tell in the eighth and the ninth that he really had nothing left and he still just went out there and got out. So, hey, finally something very nice to talk about. And hey, also Brandon Marsh keeps hitting. So, you know, everyday starter Brandon Marsh. That's a thing. Fantastic thing, by the way. But a uh, great win. Let's uh, get another dub tomorrow. That's right. Now, what, what I said yesterday, was it that harsh? Because truth be told, I swear I'm not just saying this. I mean it to the bottom of my core. I truly don't even remember me saying anything that insane. I pointed out he went 0 for 5, and I pointed out he wasn't doing anything. That pointed out it! Bryce Harper had no hits in a four-game stretch to start the season after missing time in spring training for not playing. Was it that bad? I don't know. Maybe I have to go back and listen. Thought it was just pointing out the facts. But the facts are, my man's got six ribbies and three bams. <laughs> so, you see the smile? That's how it works. When I see that, I have this. When I don't see that, I don't have this. All right. Those are my thoughts. Thank you, everybody. I love you. Let's see how tomorrow goes. Win a damn series, baby. Let's go win a series.